Okay, so remember we were talking about spontaneity. Um, Gibbs free energy calculations can help you decide in those sometimes spontaneous situations. Remember we said like on the other side where we had the situations where you had to look and see, okay, if we have um, a negative delta H and a positive delta S, it's always spontaneous. And then we had some that's like sometimes, it depends on the temperature. So this is where we can actually quantify that and see if something's going to be spontaneous or not. Will the reaction just happen is what I mean. So if you'll notice, um, we can use this new equation. It's a new equation we have here. And we now have a new component we haven't really talked about. We talked about delta H, we talked about delta S, but now we're going to include temperature. So this is important because if you're trying to perform a lab and you want the reaction to just occur, you can figure out what temperature you need to put it at to make it spontaneous and you use this calculation for that. So something I want to mention and just point out to you guys is you have to make sure you use the correct units for this. And the units are different. So the temperature here has to be in Kelvin. Delta S is always in joules per mole times K. And delta H is kilojoules per mole. So you're going to have to convert those before you plug them into this equation. Because if you don't, it's going to, you know, you can't do that. So let's take a look here. If delta G is negative, the reaction spontaneous. If delta G is positive, the reaction is not spontaneous. And if delta G is zero, what would you imagine? The reaction is at equilibrium. So something to think about if we plug in values here, um, we said before, if delta H is negative, it's typically spontaneous, right? Because that's the member of the order of the universe. Things want to be um, exothermic and they want to be more disordered. So if this is negative, a good example of that is something like a combustion reaction, right? It's going to give off heat. And then another one could be like, um, that's a spontaneous reaction, right? A combustion reaction. Well, one that's also spontaneous is something like a cold pack where that one doesn't actually give off heat that absorbs heat. So it is not always the case. That's where we have to pay attention to, you know, that's where we have to plug it in and check the temperature to see what happens. If you're given Gibbs free energy standard values for formation of compounds um, from the substituent elements, I'm going to put online here because we don't really have a page number in our book where you're going to find them. You can calculate delta G of the system by doing the sum of the delta G of the products minus the sum of the delta G of the reactants. And again, the coefficient, if there's a coefficient there in the reaction, it would come into play and you would just multiply by whatever that value is. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Um, and again, delta G, if the delta G of the system is negative, it's spontaneous. If delta G of the system is positive, it's not spontaneous. So just as a reminder there. Okay, so thermodyna thermodynamics and equilibrium go hand in hand because um, spontaneous reactions, we can also relate it to K values. So spontaneous reactions have high values for KEQ, which makes sense. They happen, like right? It favors the forward direction. It's going to have a high value. So we can also calculate KEQ using delta H standard with this equation. So that's how that can relate mathematically. Um, the other thing you want to make sure you do here is this R, depending on what units you have, we usually use R as 0.0821, but this R is typically 8.31 and that's joules per moles times K. Whereas the other one is kilojoules. We can use R equals 0.0821. That would be kilojoules per moles times K. So just be careful depending on what units you know you need to use. Okay, so let's look at examples. Let's try to predict what's happening here. So again, it says without doing calculations. So we're just making a prediction. Predict that the following reactions are spontaneous or not. So it wants us to look at them being, what are the delta S values and the delta H, delta H values? And that's how we can figure that out. So since we're just predicting, we're going to use the chart on the previous page. So you may want to flip it over and look at it as we do it. But I'll go through and explain some of these. So on the first one, let's figure out what's the delta H value here. So for A, um, the delta H, is it going to be positive or negative? Well, we have energy here on the reactant side. So that means delta H has to be positive. It's absorbing heat. And let's look for a delta S value. So is it getting more ordered or more disordered? Well, we have a gas. We have six moles of gas here and six moles of liquid. And it's forming 
a solid, and a six moles of gas. So if we look at that, it looks like it's getting, because of that solid, right, it's getting more ordered, which means delta S is negative. Now, what did we say as far as um, the universe goes? Does it like, it likes delta H negative, so that's, that one does not make it spontaneous. And delta S being negative should be positive in the way of the universe. So that's not either. So we're going to say that this is delta G must be what? It's definitely going to be non-spontaneous, which means it's going to be positive. Okay, so that's for that one. Let's take a look at the next one. So B, we see that heat is a product. So that means delta H is negative. We like that. The universe likes that. Um, are we getting more ordered or more disordered? Well, we're going from a liquid and a gas to all gases. So that's definitely getting more disordered. So that's delta S is positive. So universe likes that. So what do you imagine the delta G is here? That means the delta G is definitely negative. It's spontaneous. It's going to occur without any help. Okay. All right. I want you to try a couple more, and then we can check them in class and see if you guys can get those, and we're going to move on to the next section. Okay, just kidding, I lied. We need to do the next one because I just noticed we have a temperature involved. So let's take a look at this one. So let's do C. I'll let you guys do D and E on your own. But um, for delta H, we have heat as a product. So that's definitely going to be delta H is negative. So that's, we like that. The universe likes that. Um, delta S, it's going from a liquid to a solid. So it's getting more ordered. Um, and so that's negative delta S. Um, and in this case, if you look back at the sheet, let's look back at our little chart here. Um, we had a negative delta H and a negative delta S, right? So it says spontaneous at low temperatures. So let's take a look at the temperature we have. Our temperature is at one degrees. Would you, would you say that that's probably a low temperature? I would say it is. So I'll put here low temp. So delta G is negative. Okay. Okay. So the next section, we're going to use that equation that we saw up here. So I'm just going to write that in our box here so it's closer. So delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. Okay. And let's take a look at what we're given. Now, again, you have to be careful because the units are not the same here. So we have to make sure we convert them. Um, and let's just convert them to kilojoules. So let's see, delta G, and this is for A, delta G equals, because we're solving for delta G, right, for all these. Yeah, because they want to know if it's spontaneous or not. So we'll see if it's uh, positive or negative, what it comes out as. Um, so delta H is 25 kilojoules minus, what's our temperature, 300 Kelvin times, and our delta S is, five joules, so we need to make that kilojoules. So we're going to divide by a thousand, so that's going to be 0 0.005 kilojoules. And when I calculate that, I get 23.5 kilojoules. That's what delta G equals. So since this is positive, this is not spontaneous because delta G equals positive. So that reaction will not just happen on its own. Okay. So this would be like if I put these things on a lab bench together, if they had these values, they just wouldn't do anything. They wouldn't react together. I wouldn't have to worry about it. Okay, try a couple more of these and see how you can do. But we're going to go down to, because I'm not looking up these values. You guys can look up the values in the next section. They're not given here. I don't want to look them up right now. It's the same thing of doing for here. They're just not giving them. Like here, it's just straight up giving it to you. Here, you have to look them up. Okay, so let's look at the last section here. This would be a common like question on an AP exam. It could be like an FRQ part. Okay, so it says the standard free energies of formation and the standard enthalpies of formation in difluoroacetylene and hexafluorobenzene are, and here's the following reaction, calculate the delta S. So let's plug this into their, our equation. So this one's a little more annoying because you first have to solve for the delta, delta G and the delta H before you can even plug it in. So for example, I'm just going to put here um, the delta G. We can look at our um, chart over here. And again, it's going to be, if you go back up here, remember it's, sorry, you can't see it. It's products minus reactants. 
So our product is the C2F2, and that is 191.2, and we have three of those. So three times 191.2 minus our reactant, which is um, the hexafluorobenzene. So that's 78.2, and there's just one of those. So when I solve for that, I get 495.4, and that would be kilojoules per mole. Okay. And now I'm going to do the same thing and solve for delta H. So delta H equals, and I'm going to do products minus reactants. So I have 3 times the 241.3 minus um, the 132.8. And when I subtract that, I get 591.1. Well, now that I have these values, and that's kilojoules per mole, and that's the delta H, now that I have those values, I can use delta G equals um, delta H minus T delta S. So now I can plug into that. So I have delta G. That's my 495.4. I'm not going to put units on here just to be annoying. And then my delta H, I have 591.1. And then minus my temperature, what did it say? Our temp 298 Kelvin times... Um, delta S, right? So now I just need to solve for delta S. So if I solve for delta S, I get that it is 0.321 kilojoules per mole. Check that. Make sure you get that. Okay. Now what does it say for B? B wants us to calculate the K at 398. So remember, the equation that relates K to all this is up here. And so we can plug into that. We can plug into that equation. So we already have the delta G we calculated. So I'm going to write that equation here again real quick. So delta G equals, um, delta G standard equals negative RT ln of K. Okay, and we just found out that the delta G is 495.4. And R is the 0 0.08, 0 0.0831. Oh my gosh, that's terrible. I'm sorry. 0 0.0831. And then this is 298. And that's ln of K. So you can just solve that and solve for that. And remember, you, you're going to go KEQ equals E to the, because when I solve that, I get negative 200 equals ln of KEQ. So to solve that, I'm going to do that little E in the calculator and raise it to the negative 200. And that gives me 1.3 times 10 to the negative 87. And so when I look at this, it gives us, um, so how does it correspond to the delta G? Remember back up here, high values of KEQ are spontaneous. So does that make sense? Well, we said our delta G up here was positive. And so that means it's not spontaneous. And this is a very low number. So this is also not spontaneous. So yes, it does correspond. And it's not, it still indicates that it's not spontaneous. Okay. And the very last part you guys can do on your own. This would be good. 